if it's blue waffle. Uh, uh, that's an old one, dude. <laughs> that's a hobgoblin cave right there. Oh, I'll probably just make a scene with all your characters to copy paste from. <laughs> I just copy pasted the dick accidentally too. <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank you. The adventure just changed. That <laughs> something tore through the astral plane, and it's a giant dick, and we gotta fight it. It'll be coming along with every yeah. adventure. We just keep fighting an exorbitant amount of gelatinous cubes, and they're not even really cubes. It's weird. Uh, do you remember when I channeled my magic into you? Roll the dice, stupid ass. Something like that. <laughs> yep. New phone, who dis? Glovado. Well, fucking hey, you made it. I'm glad. What is up? Welcome to speed running character creation featuring Gladiator 22. Ah, uh, yes. Hello. How are we looking? Hola. What's up? Somebody deleted the dick. What? <laughs> I deleted my dick. We got dick <laughs> over. Get it? Dick over? Dick over. <laughs> you guys all like your tokens? Oh, yes. Hey, Jeremy. So you got Kaladin Cross? Yeah. Is your uh, token fitting enough? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. What happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> I think you look fine. What are you yeah. talking about? You're a ranger. Hey, all right. <laughs> I love it. It works, trooper. dude. Are you guys ready to start? Oh, yeah. All right, so let's get into the, the backstory and where you're at. All right, so you guys are a little adventuring party. You previously came from a small town and. You're out of that town and on to the next thing. And uh, what happened and what you're essentially chasing is glory and fame and something better than the small little, little shithole that you were in. Because, uh, you know, you kind of all banded together a little bit, did a, did a few things here and there, enough to get a little experience, a few items. But eventually there was really nothing left to do in your the small town and area you were in. It was relatively calm and peaceful, and eventually some travelers came through. Just a small group. They looked a bit rugged, but seasoned, and told of a land of an area to the east. Uh, between the mountains, a, a small settlement of adventurers, an adventurers guild that they were part of, and they said, if you can make it there, join them. And so you set off to this place between the mountains and the east, traveling through the hilly land side that you see before you, or something like that. This is Britain. <laughs> and on your way, uh, you guys get to know each other a little better, uh, because there's, there's a lot of downtime, a lot of walking, a lot of talking. Uh, but uh, as you're traveling through most of your lands, it's well regulated, not a whole lot of monsters. So it's uh, pretty much just walking all day and chilling out. Would you mind introducing yourselves, talking talking a little about yourselves? Hello, my name's Kaladin. Uh, my friends call me Cal. I'm a recently new adventurer. I worked as a handyman for a lord in another continent. And uh, they were recently assassinated, so I'm kind of on the run. Like, did, did you do it? I did not. I have been framed. Awesome. Ooh, Kaladin got crossed. Exactly. My name's Calvado. No last name. It's kind of like Cher Clavado. <laughs> I have hair like Fabio. In a past life, I was a priest. Until some wandering bands of hooligans came into my church, killed my entire congregation. My family wounded me as well. After that, I set off on my own and fell into the rangering lifestyle been fully alone until i met up with this group well good to have you so uh the these hooligans that raided your church and did all kinds of bad stuff like did they ever figure out who they were like weren't like maybe cultists or something bad were they they were i've only caught one of them so far well fucking a good that's good just because you're a cultist doesn't mean you're inherently evil. But I'm keeping my eye on you, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, this probably would have come out more in conversation and less like an info dump that I'm going to make it. But my character's name is Halo because uh, he was raised in a cult. <laughs> and he didn't know he was in a cult, but he was. He was raised from birth there. And he was supposed to be like their chosen one or something because of his divine blood. 
that runs in his heritage, whatever. And one day, a group of adventurers came and murdered the cult and quote-unquote rescued him and kind of introduced him to the outside world. And um, so he's he's complicated little fellow, but he's very scrawny and he's uh, he's always fumbling with his hands and you can see his hands have like these holy uh, symbols kind of like branded into him. And he's a pretty quiet, reserved person otherwise. Really looking forward to the campfire stories you guys are going to tell. Like it's going to be uh, it's going to be great. Uh, what about you, big guy? Points uh, over to Miglar. Uh, my, my name is Miglar, um, or Mig for short. Uh, I was basically just out on my own, came across the farm, and decided to just help the family out there for honest work. Uh, went into town uh, one day with the supplies that we were going to sell, and someone stole all of it. And I spent, I've been spending my whole time in that town just trying to get stuff back and the money so I can go back to the place with it, which is when I met you guys. Right on. Uh, Matt, before I go, so we're walking and we're just carrying our stuff. Is that right? Like, we're not yeah. in a wagon or anything like that? Unless you have any specific uh, animal with you that you may have, like, purchased a horse or something. Yeah, I got a wyvern. <laughs> <laughs> I just brought it with me. <laughs> yeah, I'll just walk in on foot then. But, uh, as far as you guys could tell, based on where you're supposed to go, it shouldn't be much longer. Well, y'all... Uh, I think I'm last. <laughs> uh, my name is Leftiferous, but people call me Lefty for short. Um, apparently, uh, our home is kind of a piece of shit because apparently the only thing you can do, like you can be a, you can work for someone who gets killed. You can build stuff and do honest living. Uh, you go near a church, you're just fucked. Cause, uh, you know, like points at the ranger. You had a bad day points at the sorcerer. You had a bad day. Uh, I'm not a fan of churches. They can eat a dick in all senses of the word because uh, my crazy ass mom kind of got involved in some cults. And uh, yeah, um, I may or may not have demons trying to pursue me and wipe me out. I, I'm not even embellishing that. That is a fact. So if you could do me a solid, if you see demons, maybe let me know. Um, that would be pretty awesome. Um, uh, one more thing we'll get out of the way just because, you know, like we're walking and we're buds and stuff. Uh, I, I can do this and I'm going to um, I'm going to make my instrument and just levitate in the air using uh, my telekinesis. Just going to kind of hover up in the air and then right back down into my hands and then I'll start playing a song or something. So this should be fun. What, what kind of um, demons are chasing you? Uh, well... Mom was a cult of shit up. I'm gonna call him Chumley. That's the the demon lord Chumley, uh, I guess. Uh, sure kind of a is. bad dude. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like mom, I guess, kind of got into some bad shit when she was like younger, and kind of offered herself up as a sacrifice. And they summoned Lord Chumley, and he showed up. And instead of eating her, he banged her, and then got in trouble because you're not allowed to do that. So he basically told mom, like, "Yo, bitch, get low." Um. If my master finds out they're going to kill you and the boy. So uh, I've basically been hidden my whole life. And uh, mom put me through school, try to you know live that normal life. But um, on a more serious note, if you see any demons, just if you could please let me know. I will do my best to help you as I run for my goddamn life. You got it, man. So how many times did your, your mom bang the demon? I don't know. I was, you know, the, the details on that are pretty sketchy. Um, I don't. Like, I don't get into demonic fucking. Like, it's it's not a subject that, you know, I like to talk about a whole lot. Because, you know, it's really difficult to ask your mom. Like, so what was it like banging a demon? Um, she uh, she is surprisingly uh, scarce in her, in her information um, on that note, sir. But if I ever find out, I will let you know. I'll ask your mom tonight. <laughs> this man has class. All right. So you guys travel. Or just about another day and a half. It gets a little cold and rainy. You go over several more large hills and landscapes. And you basically exit the territory that you knew as your homeland. So things become a lot less familiar. And it becomes rocky. And the trail is less beaten. But you do occasionally see a scrap or two on the side of the road like someone's been through here. So it's not a completely abandoned path. But eventually you reach 
what appears to be the destination that was described by those travelers that passed through. And there's a valley that this trail heads towards. Well, it's sort of a valley, but it's more like just a lot of rock and mountainous region on either side. And eventually you see in the distance some gates that block the way and block the path. You guys approach from the west. And you see that it does kind of continue around, but they said you'll come to a gate. And this appears to be the gate. There's a trellis in the center there that is down, and it looks impassable. But you do see standing behind it, let me reveal a little bit, a few guardsmen. Or just some, some people that seem to kind of notice that there are people approaching. My friends, if you don't mind, um, you, I'm sure all of you will have the opportunity to shine in battle. This is my chance to shine. I will speak to these fine gentlemen. I will secure us lodging, and I will maybe get us a hot bath, a cold ale, and some beautiful women. I like it, Leftorius. Oh, yes. And Leftorius, uh, well, all you guys do know that when you talk to these passerbys, they said to mention a keyword. Hold on, generating keyword. Gia. You tell them Gia, and they will know that you're there to join. All right, here we go. Uh, le uh, lefty's going to walk forward, and he's going to, Hello! Like, how you doing up there? It's good to see ya. We were told we needed to tell you Gia. <laughs> you hear some mumbling about, and they speak with each other a little bit. Things go back and forth. And you hear a little whistle. And... Uh, Someone steps forward from up above. A man with a magnificent beard. As far as you can tell, he's quite distant from you. Is that the guard? He's wearing like a, a different outfit than all the guardsmen. The guardsmen look, you know, just kind of rugged and distinct. This guy's got like fine clothing and uh, he just looks like he's, he's well dressed. He's got kind of a robe over all his gear. So you can't even tell really what he has. As far as stuff. And you can only see the top half of them because of behind these little, whatever these are called, bar pit things. Hail, nice. good sir, you bearded drake. Might I come up and give your hand a shake? Ha, 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 ha. Well, well, you made it all the way here. Excellent. And seems you're here to join us. Right? Uh, you if you'll have here. us. Sure. Gee, ah, uh, rah, rah, let's do this. Very well, I know, I know the word. Well, there is a little test we like to put these kind of newcomers such as yourself to. Before Does it involve drinking? I suppose you could drink if you want. You know, actually, I've got just the perfect test. Something you can do to earn your way into this camp. And oh yes, you do want to be here. We have adventures, glory, plenty of things to do, fame to gain. All right, well, it looks like you're all ready, but... You're welcome to camp outside the gates. It's safe here if you're not quite ready to do as I ask. What exactly are you, are you asking? Actually, uh, we had some men that uh, they went further east down that path. And they had a little caravan. They were supposed to go get some goods and supplies from a nearby town. They were supposed to return two days ago. Haven't seen them, though. If you wouldn't mind, maybe you could just head down that road for, hey, it's about half a day's walk. You'll come to another town, or maybe you'll come to whatever happened to them on that road. Look, nobody travels these roads unless they're coming here. Can I insight check this man? <laughs> sure, roll insight. Don't you? Well, to you, it, it feels maybe a little fishy, but what would you know? It's true, I'm not very worldly. I mean, there's some obvious factors. That might pop into your head. So we get called to the gate and get hit with a surprise. You need us to find your dudes and bring back your supplies. Is that, am I hearing this right? You get inspiration. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, we don't just let anyone in here, the man says. You gotta prove yourself first. If we just let every passerby in here, who knows, maybe they'd just come by and murder us all and take all our goods. How do we know we can trust you? Just go check on them. See if you see uh, any signs of a caravan. It's got a red top. Well, 
half red, half tan. What's in the background behind this guy? So, like, it, it's a gate. Is it open or closed? Like, what's what does it look like? It's a big uh, graded trellis. You can see the shadow of it here. Uh, okay. Up above, you can't really tell what's up there because it's way up high. Uh, you can basically just see him and the sky and rocks and mountains beyond him. Through the gate, if you look and peer through, you can see the guards and more trails. And I'll, I'll reveal a bit more. You can see some various uh, crates and uh, goods. And it looks like it goes further back, maybe into the mountains. You can't really see what's beyond that there. How many people did you send in the caravan? Uh, there were four in total. They were all, well, only one of them could probably handle himself in combat. The other three were just traders and goods handlers. Were they all humans? Three humans, one half-elf. And he looks, uh, he glares at your character. He says, and says, you look like the sort that might be able to track them down. I'd send someone myself, but uh, we're kind of low on people here. Two of our bands are out adventuring, and there's only a few of us left to hold down the place. I hate to send a lone man out. It's a bit dangerous in these parts, not too civilized. So, challenge accepted from what I can tell, but I need to go talk with my friends for a spell. Give me a few. I'll be back. What do you guys think we should do here? Once we are squarely out of earshot, I will mention that I just don't feel right about this guy. But if glory is what we're here for, I mean, rescuing people can't be the wrong path. I mean, if we don't find anybody, we can just bum rush it in there. He said there's not that many people in there. The, I think that maybe the thing I'm worried about is, you know, the old, uh, oh yeah, just go over here. And it's a trap. So I guess just, you know, expect the worst and hope for the best kind of a thing, maybe? Yeah. That's all we can do, attacking this guy, who we have no idea what his motives are. Won't help us. I wouldn't mind that robe, though. He he did, he did look quite dashing. He's clearly got access to, like, you know, razors and the things that make men men. I just look at some of the party members and just shake his head in disgust. <laughs> so requesting, then? I I'm good with it. I will follow. I will get out my little loot, and I will play a cool song, and we will walk, and it will be neat, and we it will actually enhance us and make us move faster. Not really, but you'll feel like you're moving faster. Question, if I may, before we start on this fest. Looking at you, Mig, does this pass your sniff test? I mean, I was ready to go bust through a door, so... Because <laughs> they said, they said they're uh, weak. Don't have a lot of people... I think we could just run in there and get it. The only thing that throws what? me off, this sounds gloomy as fuck. Yeah, there, there definitely isn't much cheer going around in this camp. You can tell everyone looks kind of gruff. And no one's smiling. They don't have any booze. Poor babes. So you, do you guys report back to this man? And, we we uh, decided to go take his little test, right? Yeah. That's the official group stance. Yeah, we're going to get up on it. Okay. Well, he responds very well. I will wait your return. I expect to see you in a day or less. If I do not, I will assume you failed. And please, do return. With whatever you find, we will reward you handsomely in any case. Hey, uh, one more question before we leave your lawn. How long have the other guys been gone? About four days, three nights. Noted. Usually they return within two days, sometimes three if they stay for a bit of party. But it's been too long. Something's wrong. Sounds like this town has oars. <laughs> we'll see what we can do to bring back your crew. <laughs> he nods. And then he once again says, I will await your return. Best of luck. And here. He reaches into his pouch. Take this, you might need it. And he throws a potion to you, Lefty. It's Actually, a... as he's throwing it, I'm going to slow it down to make sure I catch it. <laughs> Classy. Take that as a uh, fortune of good luck. Or Well, appreciate it. 
Alright, he just kind of watches you guys and looks, he seems to look around to the other guards, maybe that are up there, you don't see any other ones, but he's looking at someone or something. And he kind of just nods. I guess let's take off then. I'm in no way leaving, but I will follow uh, just behind the big strong barbarian guy. Let's we get out of earshot, I'll be like, yeah, this guy's totally weird. He's like, hey, come adventure. And then we get there, and he's like, hey, we can only take the few, the proud, the brave, except we don't have that many people because everybody's gone, and I don't trust you, so you got to go do stuff. But here's a potion. Like, uh, okay. <laughs> so you guys travel further east, down the rocky path. There's a, a good bit of mountainous, just rocky region kind of like what you see here for a while, but after a while it does open back up and start to become more forested, but still rather rocky. You lower an elevation. Several hours pass. And eventually you guys come to a new area. As you travel south and east. You notice up ahead there's something that looks like it might be what you're looking for. Caravan with a top that's red. Hopefully the people inside aren't dead. <laughs> I just want to look around like my immediate area see if I see anything sure. like, you're noteworthy. You're welcome to all make uh, spot checks or uh, whatever most relevant skill you have to tracking and that sort of thing. Is it daytime? It is approaching evening. Hey guys, I'm gonna take a leak in these woods real quick. Be right back. So if nobody says anything, I'm just gonna start walking towards the cart because that's what we're here to do. So I'm gonna be an idiot and just walk towards it unless someone tells me not to. Let me scope it out first. Okay. Little scout here, the perception check. Very good. Okay. That's that's a rather high perception <laughs> check. You're, you're still about too far to get any super good details. But once you get within, uh, yeah, just within inspection range, 10, 15 feet or so, there's probably about good to kind of notice some things. Uh, that kind of perception, just you eyeing it over. This thing looks old and abandoned. This ain't no two day old wreck. The wood is rotting. The right wheels, not even there. Almost looks like this was just kind of trashed here long ago. But it does have some red on it. It gives you maybe the, the instinct that maybe this is what he was talking about. But it's hard to be sure. When you say it, there's red on it. What what does that mean? Like, is it red fabric? Is it like red yeah. boxes? Like what? It's a uh, fabric, and it's mostly torn and gone. There's not even much fabric left. Is the what is the intent of the fabric to cover up the top of the wagon? Yeah, looks like it. As far as you can tell. Let's uh, let's see what the the wagon looks like without the the red fabric. I can move it from back here without having to touch it. I'd say that's a good idea because I'm not sure that any there's space for any other uh, current wagon to be able to get around this one. I want to cast Mage Hand uh, telekinetically to lift the fabric off of the wagon carefully. Just kind of lift it up. See what's underneath it. I'm roughly 25-30 feet away. As you lift, some of it rips and tears with age and rot. But some of it, uh, I don't know, it doesn't seem to do anything special in particular. Okay. Suddenly, you hear from behind you. <laughs> There's a, you hear like a poof, and then that laugh. 
as you all turn around, there's this huge, kind of ghostly figure with stuff draining from his eyes, and he mumbles some words that you don't understand. You sound like gobbledygook. Do I know what he is? Like, is he a human? <laughs> Doesn't appear human. He's also very large. It's like ten feet tall. He's wearing this reddish robe with gold embroidery. Yeah, it looks like some kind of demon warlock, vampire, you're not sure. Creepy as fuck, you've never seen anything like it. I'm gonna hide behind my allies to the best of my ability. And after he mumbles a few things, you hear him say at last, Meet your end, and then he disappears just as quickly as he came. And right after he says that, a few things make some squawky sounds. And you hear some rustling in the areas up above you. On the hills by the trees. I'm gonna immediately look over to uh, Mig and just say, uh, Buddy, I think it's about time to fight. I'm gonna put my hand on you and boost up your might. And I'm gonna cast Bardic Inspiration on Miglar. Very well. You also see this large ass creature step forward with a huge menacing club and a spear across his back. Uh, and he says, More fun! And then he thrusts his club pointing towards you and says, in some language, These things begin to move. These are, uh, little flying battle chickens is basically what they look like. Roll initiative. Alright, so looks like lefties first. Now that things are set into motion, I'm about to drop my drawers and butt chug this potion. <laughs> Does it look like they're going to jump down uh, from the cliff? The chicken things have wings and they seem to be hovering for the most part. Some of them are kind of on the ground, but it looks like they could fly if they wanted to. Yeah, what about the, the bugbear? Does he have a club like in the picture or does he have a bow on him? He does have a pretty large ass club. But he also has a, a big spear and it looks like there might be multiple of them, pull them across his back. So it looks like he could uh, do what he needs to do. Ranged or close up. And how high are these cliffs? Uh, this side is a little bit higher. It's about 15 feet. And these are about 10. Lefty, you are up for the first action. I am going to cast a Minor Illusion, and I am going to try to create a sound of a dragon roaring um, overhead, just like passing from like left to right, just like what I think a dragon would sound like anyway. Um, okay. It says if you create a sound, its volume can range from a whisper to a scream. Um, it could be your voice, someone else's voice, a lion's roar, a beating of drums, or any other sound you choose. So it's just going to be like, roar, like overhead. Okay. And I am going to move uh, back. Uh, I'm going to move back a little bit. I'm going to have you roll intimidation. Okay. I got something else I'm going to do. If uh, It's a bonus action once I get this done. I think I get an extra plus one on that because I have jack of all trades. So I get half my proficiency bonus. Yeah, that's two, so. I got a 10 on my intimidate. <laughs> my dragon's like, mew! The cockatrice things do kind of hover or cower in fear for a moment, it appears. The bugbear thing looks unfazed. I'm going to look at the bugbear and say, uh, seems my scream was a miss. Well, let's see how you like this. And I'm going to reach out with my hand and I'm going to like pull towards me and I'm going to try to like force pull him using uh, telekinesis. Probably not going to work, but we'll try it. He's got a DC 13 strength save he's got to make. Ha ha. If he fails, I can pull him five feet towards me and hopefully down whatever he's standing on, which would be awesome. Read my ability that I wrote in there. Nice. People have oh. a laugh. <laughs> oh, gotcha. It does appear to give him a little yank, but not quite enough to pull him off the cliff. But he does stop laughing. I'm going to look at him and be like, mm. <laughs> Pass turn. Cockatrice, somewhat cowering in fear, still have their orders. 
Uh, one swoops down the cliff, and another swoops down the cliff. And these ones do too. The one at the bottom here makes some <laughs> clucking sounds. Got some flies towards Midgard. Comes at him with a peck. What is your AC? 17. You easily defect, deflect that beak. Clavado, there's two that have swarmed on top of you. And uh, attempt to, to peck you to death. What is your AC? 16. Well, one of them you deflect easily. The other as the beak of the gods. <laughs> uh, not quite a crit, but it gets through for some damage. It pecks you for three damage. In the leg, the upper thigh. A fierce, hearty peck. It's like a pointy rock jabbing you. And you must make a or constitution saving throw to avoid petrification. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, that's a good roll. Well, you're about to get stoned. You feel yourself freezing up as this uh, your leg can't move, and it spreads to your stomach and upper body. And you feel like your your muscles are freezing, and when you look down, you can see your your skin turning to stone. It ain't good, but don't worry. You'll get another chance to shrug this off on your turn. There's one more cockatrice attack, and it's coming at Kaladin. Hey. It's easily deflected. Whatever your AC is, I don't think his six is gonna. Work. Nope. All right, and it's Halo's turn. This cart that is ahead of us—is it like completely broken down, or could I maybe crawl under it if I got to it? You could probably manage to crawl under it. I am going to do my best um, running slide. I don't know if I can get there. I can move thirty feet. It gets me like there. So if I can slide under it, I will. If not, I'll be next to the cart. Yeah, you can use both your moves to do that. You can turn your other action into a move. I don't want to do that. I still want to do something productive. Yeah, you can prepare to duck under it there. Okay, I'll just move next to it for this turn, and then I will whip out my wand and cast Magic Missile at the one right there next to Mr. Mr. Clovoda? Clovado! Damn it. Okay, so I do two, two, and five to that one there on the left of Clovado. Two, two, and five, okay. Yeah, Tom's initiative was a 17, so it is actually his 18. Turn. Er, 18. Yeah. 18 so. Okay, I put you in there. So on your turn here, roll another one of those constitution saving throws to see if you shrug off this turning to stone. Come on, higher than a five. Are we... Never mind. <laughs> I was just getting ready to ask, are we allowed to donate inspiration? Because I would give mine to Tom. Unfortunately not. The stone creeps in. It takes over. You fully lock up. You're still aware of what's happening, but you can't move anything. You're just stuck staring straight forward in stasis. Can I talk? Nope. Your statue. I'm gonna look over at Clavado and be like, "Who's gonna say what to my mom?" <laughs> Tell her I'm rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kaladin, you're up. Gaston is going to attack. It's right beside me, to my left. That looks like That's a crit. crit. That was a Jesus sixteen. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is enough to <laughs> gut that one pretty good. You uh, slice off its wing and cut into its chest. It doesn't seem to be immediately dead, but it ain't going anywhere. It's not flying anymore. Maybe not even pecking anymore. The petrification was surely a fright, but we got guys like Cal making sure we're going to eat good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to disengage and just move over here a little bit towards Liftorius. Okay. Miglar? Uh, I'm going to go into a rage and attack this fucking thing. Don't forget, you got Bardic Inspiration. Yeah. You just rolled like seven of the Paladin's rolls all in one. Nice job. 
And then it adds two, because I don't think it adds the rage, so... 13. This one is nearly turned into a pulp. It squawks. <laughs> Hit it so hard that it doesn't look like it's going to be flying away either. Not with okay. that kind of injury. <laughs> nice. It is the bugbear's turn. He lets out a roar. Or maybe it's a uh, laugh. Uh, and he brings up a spear. He seems to glance around, deciding who to check it at. And he looks at the biggest guy, and checks it at you. Oh! The spear goes wide, nearly hitting the cockatrice next to you. <laughs> nice. I am going to stare at the bugbear. I'm going to cast a vicious mockery on him. He'd be like, uh, last spear went right. It was kind of sad. Surely you don't f*** your mom that bad, or something. I don't know. <laughs> He has to make a DC 13 wisdom save or take one point of psychic damage. He does flinch his eyes a bit or squint. He seems to be hurt by your mockery. Well, hopefully he gets hurt by gravity. I'm going to try to pull him again. Another strength saving, saving throw for Mr. Bug there. This one he seems to shrug off. Can't even really tell it happened. He seemed very stout. Um, he's going to have disadvantage on his next attack roll it makes. The bugbear from okay. Vicious Mockery, just FYI. Alright, the birds. The one that's severely wounded next to Miglar attempts to peck him again. It does not peck well. It's easily deflected. Lovato, they seem to be ignoring you now. The one flies forward towards Lefty. This one chases Kaladin. This one limps along towards Lefty. And they all attempt to peck you. Alright, well one of them... It's certainly a miss. What is your AC, Lefty? 14. The one that is injured gets you right in the freaking boot, and it seems to puncture for 3 damage. And roll a constitution saving throw. 16. Alright, Kaladin, what's your AC? 14. This one manages to get through your defenses. And uh, extra and the lower abdomen it does four damage and your save at six is not successful you feel yourself beginning to turn to stone i'm gonna look at the one beside me and be like not today little birdie i'm not getting stoned but just know that next turn you're about to get boned and that's their turns Cavallado, i'm gonna give you another saving throw Normally it's not allowed, but you're getting a bonus one because this is your first D&D &D session ever. Let's see if you can shrug off this fuckery. It's the gods and their will. Tom, you need better dice. <laughs> <laughs> the gods that do not favor you today. Halo, you're up. Uh, this closest one right there, That it's not dead, right? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, Halo's gonna outreach his arm. And you see the holy symbols on his hand kind of glow. He's going to drag it down and his eyes go black for a second. And I'm going to cast Toll the Dead. 13 <laughs> wisdom save or it'll take the 8 damage. Doesn't seem to affect him. I'm going to use whatever movement I have to crawl under the cart and get cover from the bugbear as best I can. Very well. Kaladin, you're starting to feel hard as a rock. Roll another save. Come on, baby. Hey! Ah, yes. oh, you shrug that. Whatever the fuck it was creeping up on you. It's no longer doing so. We're back to normal. Shit just got real, hoes, because Kaladin can move his toes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use mobility to move by uh, Meglar here and attack the wounded one. Appears to be a hit. You stab it clean through. And its neck goes limp. Unresponsive. Seems to be dead. That's Miglar? I'm going to uh, turn uh, behind me, turn around and see the one that's near lefty, and give it a big swing of an axe. That's a hit. 17. That one is cleaved in two. I'm going to stay put. Bugbear roars out in dismay, seeing the birds fall in front of him. He grabs another spear, remembering the mockery 
that you said about his mother. He chucks it at you, Lefty. Don't forget disadvantage on this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's uh, quite a miss. It actually lands way over here. He stomps his foot. You continue to bumble with your foot and your spear. Need I remind you, I'm right over here. <laughs> <laughs> what do I want to do? Um, I'm going to start with a bonus action. I'm going to push this. I'm going to try to push this uh, cockatrice away from me. This one. I want to move it five feet up, just out of my face. Despite being a weak bird, it stands firm. <laughs> Well, let's fix that. Uh, are either of the two remaining ones injured? I thought one of them was chopped up, like its wing was the all fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Should have just punched it in the head. I'm going to do vicious mockery on it. All right, little birdie, let me get in your head. Now it's time to roll over and time to play dead. It uh, seems to affect it. It does this thing and, like, stands up stiff and straight. You're not sure what it's doing, but it seems odd. Well, all right then. Does that give it disadvantage too? It does. It's got multiple status effects of fuckery on it. The one left standing without any damage yet doesn't seem to have the brains to stop attacking. So it comes at you, Lefty. You easily deflect the peck. And the other one that's pretty beat up attempts a disadvantage for his dumbass. Yeah, it does not get through your defenses either. Clavado? I'm giving you one more at disadvantage, <laughs> but that's it. Two big numbers, that's what we need. So 95. Do I, so I gotta roll another constitution here? Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. You sure I can't just flex with rolling strength? <laughs> I'll, right, I'll let you try burst out of it. Burst out of it? Fuck yeah. No, no, I don't want to fuck up the rules here, man. No, um, I'm gonna allow it. You can I'll take whatever you can get, it, dude. But it's still disadvantage. Uh, so Close. <laughs> Okay, so you get 10. Oh, the DC's 11. <laughs> oh, dang, so close. You almost flexed out of it. You see Clovato, like, shake a little bit, and a few, like, what seem to be pebbles fall off of him. <laughs> but he's still a statue. Uh, Halo? I'm gonna poke my head out of my cover and toll the dead on the hurt cockatrice up here. It appears affected. How much does it take? Uh, the five. It seems to take its toll. It crumples into a pile of... They don't have feathers. Skin and bones. And use whatever is remaining of my movement to crawl back in my hidey hole. Very good. Kaladin? Kind of sprint around the cockatrice and get behind it to try to get advantage. You got it. Is that seven damage? Miglar? So, how does scaling uh, elevation work for movement? Like half? Yeah, it's half move, basically. These are uh, kind of steep, so you'll have to make a climb check just to make sure you don't slip and lose your movement upwards. I'm going after big boy then. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> you charge up like a fucking boss. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Uh -huh. I'm going to give a big old swing of the axe. Now that I'm up here. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted all the juju on the, yeah. on the climb. It <laughs> wore yourself out. Bounces off his hide armor. He raises his club. And retaliates. His retaliation is utter failure. He misses. Let me see how bad this miss is. Because no. it's a great miss. <laughs> I'm good. What is your AC? 17. It's a pretty dang bad miss. He leaves himself open with this swing. Like, you duck under it. He swings super hard and he twists around, leaving himself vulnerable. You can either take a free attack or shove him off the cliff I was or say, whatever you want. You can take an action on him. Yeah, if I get an action, I'd like to do a push. Opposing strength, you would technically get plus five. It sounds like since you're raging and you already rolled. So, okay. yeah, you shove him down the cliff. He uh, tumbles pretty hard and does look to injure himself a little bit, falling prone at the bottom. All right, it takes two fall damage from the incident. And 400 pride damage. Yeah. <laughs> Lefty? I'm going to get my um, instrument, and I'm going to start just strumming on it really fast. I'm going to kind of point it at the bugbear, 
I'm going to just scream out, like, did you lose your footing and fall astray? I think it's time for you to run away. And I'm going to cast uh, Dissonant Whispers. Yeah. Boom. So he's got to make a DC 13 wisdom save, where he takes 12 psychic, and he's got to run away from me. He drops his club and clutches his head. Seems to affect him. Well, I put 12 inches in his ear. <laughs> Tell him to get out of here. <laughs> the last bird being surrounded doesn't seem to care. It's on a mission. It's to bite the bard. Before he tries to bite the bard, uh, Mr. Bugbear will he will immediately use his reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from me. Gotcha. Since he is prone... He's crawling. <laughs> he's basically clutching his head and cowering in fear. Oh. And kind of rolling away from you, but he's not moving space. But yeah, he seems... Uh, Rather defeated looking. Alright, the bird pecks. What was your AC again? Uh, 14. This peck lands. Gets you right in the ass cheek. For three damage. And you must roll a constitution saving throw. Good luck. You succeed that one. There's only one person on the team that has <laughs> trouble with this. <laughs> the ass peck hurts, but it doesn't turn you into stone. Votto, your turn passes by as you stand rock hard. Uh, the bird has been hurt before, right? Yes, slightly. For the rapier damage. Got stabbed. You're gonna do the good old toll the dead again, then. It does, it does some damage. damage. Okay. Um, seeing as how the bugbear is down on the ground, I'm going to crawl all the way out of my hidey hole and stand by the cart. I don't want him rolling under there with me. I'm gonna flank this creature one more time and hit it with my rapier. For eight damage. That is enough to send it prone. It might not be dead yet, but it looks like an easy finish. Miglar? Oh, um, this is where Lefty's bad influence on me. I'm going <laughs> to do something dumb. <laughs> but that's what I am right now. Um, I'm going to take a leaping jump with <laughs> the axe and just come down with it on him. Fucking um, Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from the top rope in it right here, oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Go you get advantage. Roll. And paladin rolls. Double strength damage. <laughs> Good deal. What, so what do I do here? Just normal attack roll. Oh, sweet GC. Come on, baby. Yeah, add your strength damage yet again to whatever damage you roll. So do I just do a strength? Uh, uh, just a normal roll. and just uh, Yeah, just roll your normal damage. And whatever your, whatever your strength modifier is, just add that on top. Oh, okay. So it's two for the rage and then three with the strength. So uh, 14 altogether. All right. That hits him really hard and uh, opens up a pretty big wound across his chest and arm. Doesn't look like he's going to be getting up. It comes to his turn, but combat's basically over here as your enemies are left crippled and helpless. They're still alive, but it's up to you guys what you want to do with them. It doesn't look like this bugbear or cockatrice are fighting anymore. So combat ends. Didn't the creepy dude say that this was our end? I say that we give them both the rend and just finish them. I'm going to raise the axe. I'm raising the axe. And... Yeah. I'm going over to Clavado and just, do I know how to solve this problem at all? Yeah, same. Can you cast Wish? <laughs> um, make a, do you have any relevant saves to know about this sort of thing? Or, uh, skills? Like a check? medicine? Okay. Yeah, that's relevant. You can make a medicine check. There's your roll, Tom, right there, buddy. What kind of medicine gear do you have? I don't have any medicine gear. I do have magic hands that heal people. <laughs> and I do... I, I have skill in an herbalism kit, if that helps. If you have magic hands, I'm rock hard. The first thing I would try is I do have an ability called healing hands, and I would try it on him. But I, I don't know. Here's the here's the text. I know as a player it's not going to do shit because it's health points. But... You can heal his health back up. Alright, so you give him a good look over and... You know, I have your party stand aside. Let me let 
let me see what I can do type of thing. And you determine that this doesn't seem to be a permanent thing. It looks like you don't know what to do, but it looks like given time it might just wear off. I will relay that to the party. I will still also have healed him for two hit points if he can get him in this state. Yeah, he can. And then I'll ask anybody else if they're hurt and need healing. I do see some entries on Lefty and Kaladin. Why don't we just uh, kind of wait for um, our ranger friend here to thaw and... Uh, you know, maybe while we wait, I can strum us up a little song and kind of invigorate our spirits from the inside. See also Song of Rest. Oh, can, I, rest. can I crack it like an egg? I mean, no one doubts your capabilities, but that's not good for his stabilities. So maybe <laughs> don't do that. Please, no. I'm going to suggest Miglar kind of carry him and we just kind of get away from the cart. Uh, Miglar is super strong, but like I think when you're petrified, it increases your weight by like a factor of ten. <laughs> okay. I mean, he doesn't need to breathe. I have a <laughs> just bag carry of his holding, top half. so I can technically <laughs> put the bag over his head and carry him wherever we want. <laughs> He's draggable. Oh. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, he is uh, a bit heavier. My vote is let's take a short rest because I can I can get us some health back for f not free but less f free. We won't have to use spell slots to get healing back. Is what I'm trying to say. Sounds good. Short rest, all right. We wait an hour in game and we can burn one of our one or both of our two hit dice and roll to get that many hit points back. And then with my song of rest, we can we'll get an each get an additional one d six back. The hit dice that we burn will be recovered when we do a long rest. So it's kind of like a non magical healing. And Jeremy, this is why the song of rest will help you. Roll a d six as well, and get a six. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I need to take another save here to see if this wears off during a short rest. Before he does that, can I do a bardic inspiration on him if he's crumbling or doing anything that indicates he's maybe alive? Every once in a while, you kind of see a little shaky, like something's happening, but you're not. Just like a little shaky statue type of thing. I did bardic inspiration on Clavado. You could add five to your next uh, saving throw. Yeah, I'll definitely take it. What do I need to roll? Uh, make another save. You can once again use strength. I'm allowing it. Hot damn. There's the dice. Did you burst out of that like the Kool-Aid man through a wall? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it looks like a chicken. <laughs> what the fuck happened here? Oh, I jumped off the big cliff and killed the, the big thing. Good boy. Yeah, there's blood and guts all over the place. Four dead chickens. Well, well do, do, are you okay? Do you need anything? I feel fucking great. Let's eat. <laughs> He's been stoned for the past, you know, ten minutes. Guys. What, do you, what do you expect? Got the munchies. Just, <laughs> just me cooking up some of them chickens help us in any way? You can inspect them and roll some uh, survival skill. Hello. That's a double crit. That's oh. a double oh. rainbow. <laughs> one in four hundred <laughs> chance on that one. Can't roll that. <laughs> You'd be good on stone, but you can want to kick a chicken. Yep. I'm really good at cooking, guys. Dude, you walk over there and just, like, slice off a leg and inspect the meat, and it looks stringy, and it won't taste the best, but it's edible if you cook it just right. You know the way. The way. It's sinewy. Not like normal chicken. These have, like, this weird muscle. It's not gourmet, boys, but it'll do. Get over here. All right, I got one. He got turned to stone, and for a while he was stuck. <laughs> Comes out of that shit and do the chickens he cooks. It's just <laughs> stuck. All and right, so you guys rest, cook up these cockatrice. I need you all to make a perception check while you're resting and cooking and chilling and reveling over the success of your battle. Those are pretty damn fucking good, guys. <laughs> yeah. 
You hear a twig snap in this direction, and you all turn and look and see a man peering out of the brush. He's, uh, he's pretty far off there, but his, you can tell immediately his, he notices that he, uh, he stepped on a twig, you guys all looked at him. His face turns a bit red, and he looks like he doesn't know what to do. Uh, a twig underfoot. We all heard him snag it. Now let's go kill that faggot. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not going on the internet now. He turns nope. to run once you guys stand up. Actually, all you guys are above his initiative. So you can kind of collectively decide what you want to do as he turns tail and you all notice that he is intending on running away. You do only get a split second, though. He gains ground every, every moment. Catch him. Clavado, if you'd be so kind, uh, knock an arrow and let it unwind. I want to take a step to the left and try to uh, get an arrow right into a leg. Very well. Roll an attack. There you go. It almost hits his leg. He does seem to be wearing something that must have saved him. It skins his leg. But he seems to keep on running. Lefty, Don't just stand your legs are roots let's pursuit uh it's my turn i'm gonna i'm gonna move i'm gonna cast command halt is what i'll call out and he has to do a wisdom saving throw against dc 13. he freezes in place against his will he stops running you guys can collectively decide what you're gonna do here you don't have to go in turn order we need to apprehend him soon this spell won't hold forever <laughs> Miglar's like done and done. <laughs> I'll get right in front of Put him. my balls on his face. And be like, hi, friend. He looks familiar. He's one of the men behind the gate. What are you doing out here? He stammers. He says, I, 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 I. And he doesn't say much other than that. I, 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 I am going to die if I don't cooperate. That's what I'm hearing. I Roll. stick my dagger against his back. Make an intimidation at advantage. With all of you surrounding him, almost any roll is good enough here. He says, uh, wh wh what, do you, what do you want to know? Just please don't kill me. I'm not ready for this. Uh, you need to speak plainly, and you need to speak real. If you could just tell us, what is your deal? What's going on at the, uh, the camp? We get invited like we're friends, and then we get sent off to an untimely end. Not super cool. Gotta say, not alright. Um, just make this quick. We just got done with the fight. Come on. Look, I, I'm just, I'm just following orders here. I, you weren't supposed. To, uh, listen, <laughs> if I tell you the truth, will you not kill me? That's a better deal than we've been dealt so far. I can speak for myself, but not for Miglar. I'll uh, give a nice little toothy grin in front of him. He says, I, I, I've been in your shoes. Uh, they, they did the same to me and my party when we arrived. It, it's a trap. You're supposed to be petrified and they capture you and then they, they hold you against your will. And, and then you then you lose everything. You're nothing but a minion like I am. I was sent to see if you were successful or not. And now I'm caught. Look, I, I've considered my life over long ago. I was once a happy adventurer, seeking these same lands. Thinking there was some glory in it all, only to be tricked, petrified by those birds that are no more. Well, it appears you're stronger than my band was. That's How many are you? I don't get to know everything. But if I'm being honest, maybe I can help you. Please don't kill me. Do you have any friends for which you would weep if we went back and slaughtered everyone at the keep? I have lots of friends there. How many like you are there? Well, I think most of us. There's only a, a few but that hold command. The rest of us are all slaves. You are going to be slaves too if you got petrified there. They strip you of everything, hold you for 
days, months, years, whatever it takes to break you down, break your will, and make you join them. All right, man, dry up the teary eyes. Just tell us, back at the keep, who is the prize? Who do we need to kill? I don't know the main guy. I've never seen him. But the man on top of the the wall there, that was Davod. I don't know where he came from, but he's one of the originals. Now he's dead. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my, my party, they're good people, but they'll fight you because they think they have to. I would too if I weren't in this situation. I'm just being honest. Because I'm scared for my life now. And I see that you five are strong. Maybe you could put an end to this. I think there's more to it, but I don't know everything. They don't let us deep in the underground. They hold some kind of ceremony every... Well, about twice a year. I don't know what they're doing, but they also send out uh, some of their, their main guys to lure more people in. I was once lured. I'm guessing they did the same to you. Some strangers came to you in a small town, promised glory. Just go here. Yeah, I knew what was happening. I thought you were all gonna join us or, well, be imprisoned for a long time and then eventually join us. But, uh, maybe things will be different now. When this petrification sets in, how do you move them? That was my job. I tell them, they handle the rest. They'll come get you. And you ain't going nowhere once you're stoned. Is there a back way into the keep? It's all closed off. You have to slide down from the mountains. But, uh, I, I don't know. The gate is the main way. And if we were petrified, you would go back and tell them and they would send more people out to collect us? Yes, that was my job. Look, I can't go back there now. They'll know hold something's on. up. They probably have more people watching. Well, hold um, up, hold up, hold up there, buddy. I'll be killed. Not if you go back and tell them how many are petrified down here. I want to cast a spell. I want to cast a minor illusion. And I want to make an image of uh, Clavado petrified. I just want to see if it if it looks convincing. You have seen him in his petrified form, so it does look rather convincing. You have studied him rock hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if they're expecting, you know, this, we could leave it for them. And then just give them the treatment they give us. Hide in the bushes, let them come out, and then ha ha ha! Ha ha! Well, if what this man says is true, that they're prisoners, we shouldn't kill them, we should just free them. And this is the part everyone in the party hates me. <laughs> I don't necessarily disagree. I'd like to get my hands more on the tall, creepy dude, or the guy that's at the gate with the nice robe, and you know, a little gold and all that. I was, I was eyeballing it. Minion bitch, does anyone from the originals come <laughs> with the party to gather the petrified? He looks around nervously. Eye in the bushes, the trees, up the road. He says, yeah, they usually send... I, I, I'm not really sure what they'll do. They'll send someone to get you, that's for sure. They could just send minions. Maybe one of them will come. But it's to the point where I don't know who's all a slave and who's the original there anymore. I know my original people, what's left of them, but there are others that were there before. I've heard rumors that this was actually a, a real place that was for adventurers at one time, some sort of guild they were forming. But uh, I think that ended. These evil forces took over. Well, in any case, I'm on your side now, because I can't go back there. They'll kill me. Especially if they knew I told you all this, which they probably do. He keeps looking around nervously, up the road, the bushes. Did you see any of them? 
Uh, roll perception again if look around at everything. There's a lot of trees and bushes. You don't see anyone directly, but occasionally you see a bush move from the wind and you're like, uh, you almost feel like you should go over there and check it. And it's just kind of happening in a lot of places. It's kind of a windy evening. You can see why he's nervous, but you don't see anyone directly. And so ends our session one. All right, Good guys. Good shit, Matt. That was fun. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Glad you guys could make it. 